Deliverance Church Theatre, Life Transformation Center, welcomes you to a life-changing program. Tazama Ju. Psalms 121 says, Our help comes from above, and your life will never be the same again. Tazama Ju. Together, let's connect with the heavens. Be blessed. Appreciate the Lord. Give the Lord a good hand. Give the Lord a good hand. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. I said, I celebrate. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody say, My life. Will never, will never ever, ever be, the be the same again. Just turn to your neighbor and tell them thank you for coming to the service today. I appreciate you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's appreciate the choir as they sit down. Naomba tuweza kuketi chini. As you smile in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want us to turn to our Bibles in the book of Luke chapter 2. From verse 25. Luke chapter 2. From verse 25. And I read in Jesus' name. Amen. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem. Somebody say there was a man whose name was Simeon and the same man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he has seen the Lord Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in child Jesus to do for him after the customs of law, then took him up in the arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which has prepared before the face of all people. A light to righten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at these things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yeah, the sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna. Can somebody say there was one Anna? A prophetess, the daughter of Panuel, that of the tribe of Asher. She, she was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a window of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with the fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. I would like to request Francis if you can read Romans 12 verse 1 and 2. Warumi kuminambili aya kwanza hadi apili. Basi ndugu zangu Na wasihi kwa huruma zake mungu, itoeni mili yenu iwe dhabihu ilio hai. Atakatifu ya kumpendeza mungu, ndio ibada yenu yenye maana. Aya pili, wala msifuatishe namna ya dunia hii, bali mgeuzwe kwa kufanywa upi ya nia zenu. Mpate kujua hakika mapenzi ya mungu ya lio mema, ya kumpendeza na ukamilifu. Praise the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless the leading of his word once again. I want to speak to us. Living a consecrated life. 
kuishi maisha yaliyo tu ya wakfu living a consecrated life kuishi maisha yaliyo tu ya wakfu and i know the lord is going to challenge you and me na najua bwana atatuchia changamoto to be able to live this kind of life ili kwamba tuishi maisha ya namna hii living a consecrated life tukaweza kuishi maisha yaliyo tu ya wakfu consecration kutia wakfu is declaring something holy or sacred ni hali ya kule ya kule ya kuteua kitu kiweze kuwa kitakatifu you can use consecration interchange change bre unaweza kuitumia kwa namna kadhaa with sanctification pamoja na kuiweza kusafisha ama kutakasa it is like when we declare a, the house of god consecrated ni kama wakati tunapotangaza nyumba ya Mungu ikiwa imetiwa wakfu when we declare this altar consecrated tunapotangaza madhabahu haya kuwa yametiwa wakfu it means we have declared it holy ninamaanisha tumeitangaza kuwa matakatifu and to the lord mbele za bwana it is like when pastors or priests ni kama wakati ambapo wachungaji ama kuhani are being consecrated wanapotiwa wakfu or any other person ama mtu yote yule and you remember na ukumbuke we are all priests sote ni makuhani in the house of god katika nyumba ya mungu because priesthood now kwa sababu ukuhani it is now the the, the, the jesus christ kind of priesthood ni ile ukuhani ambayo unafuatilia mfano wa yesu where we are all called to be in this loyal priesthood ambapo sote tumeweza kuitwa tuweze kuwa ma, are, mataifa matamu yameteuliwa consecration now na kuwa kutiwa wakfu it is not for some few people sio kwa watu wachache tu but there is a call of consecration lakini kuna Mungu ambaye ni wa kutia wakfu there is a call of holiness ama kuna mwito wa utakatifu there is a call to be to be sacred kuna mwito wa kuweza kuwekwa kando na kuwa watakatifu for every child of god kwa kila mwana wa Mungu if you can hear me can you say amen kama unanisikia sema amina now consecration kutiwa wakfu comes from a latin word natoa kwa neno hilo la kilatin called consecrate consecrate ambalo linatamkwa namna hiyo consecrate it is being dedicated to god na inamaanisha kuweza kupatianwa kwa mungu it is being devoted to god ni kuitoa kwa mungu or being sacred for god ama kuwa takatifu kwa ajili ya mungu you can hear me can you say a good amen kama unanisikia sema amina nzuri joshua 3:5 Yeshua 3:5 Joshua 3:5 Yeshua mlango wa 3 aya 5 The Bible says Biblia inasema Joshua told the people Yeshua akawaambia watu Consecrate yourself Jitakaseni nafsi zenu For tomorrow Kwa sababu kesho The Lord will do amazing things Mungu atafanya mambo ya maajabu Among you Kati yenu Listen to me child of God Nisikize mwana wa Mungu There is amazing things Kuna mambo ya ajabu that God God do to his people ambayo Mungu anawafanyia watu wake when they are consecrated mara wanapojitakasa ama kutoka kwa our God is holy kumbuka Mungu wetu ni mtakatifu God is holy Mungu wetu ni mtakatifu Yes true God want to bless each and every one of us ni kweli Mungu ananuia kubariki kila mmoja wetu but in the holiness of God lakini katika utakatifu wa Mungu God is calling Mungu anaitana for people who are consecrated akiuliza watu walio jitia wakfu there is a spiritual demand kuna kuna mahitaji la kiroho by the holy spirit ya roho mtakatifu for people to be consecrated ili kwamba watu wakatiwe wakfu to go wa mbele za Mungu to be consecrated wakatakasike it is to be set apart waweze kuwekwa kando it is to be peculiar ni kuweza kuwa tofauti it is outside ordinary ni nje ya kawaida it is when you are not ordinary wakati ambapo haupo kawaida thought life katika maisha yako ya mawazo every area of your life na kila sehemu ya maisha yako can somebody say consecration mtu aseme kutia wakfu can somebody say consecration mtu aseme kutia wakfu this when god was speaking this na mungu alikuwa kinena haya it was when they were preparing to close jordan walipokuwa kijiandaa kuvuka mto jordan to get into the inheritance ilikuwa mbona kaweza kuingia kwenye milki yao there is an inheritance for you child of god kuna milki yako mtumishi bwana wa mungu there is a place god want you to go kuna mahali mungu ananuia ufike and god want you to consecrate na mungu anataka ujitie wakfu he want you to go na nataka uende a consecrated person ukiwa mtu ambaye umetakasika there is a 
an inheritance kuna, kuna that you cannot receive if you are not consecrated for you to enjoy your canaan for you to enjoy the land that closed Jordan the inheritance of God there is a demand of sacredness can somebody say amen amen can somebody say amen amen because many people want to live carelessly want to live their lives according to what they want but they don't want sacredness they don't want sacredness they want the blessings of God but remember our God is holy and he says be ye holy as I am holy the demand is there be holy as I am holy Yahweh is a holy God Yawe ni mta, ni Mungu mtakatifu. He is a holy God. Yeye ni Mungu mtakatifu. Other people can serve many other gods. Wengine waweza kutumikia miungu wengi. And those other gods have no demand of consecration. Na miungu ya ile mingine haina hitaji la kutakaswa. But if you are worship of Yahweh. Lakini kama wewe ni muabudu wa Yahweh. If you are worship of Jesus kama Christ. Kama wewe ni muabudu wa Yesu Kristo. He is a holy God. Yeye ni Mungu mtakatifu. There is a demand. Na kuna hitaji of consecration. La kujitia wakfu. Can somebody say amen? Mtu aseme amina. Can somebody say amen? Amen. In Hebrews 12. Kitabu cha Ibrania 12. Hebrews 12. Wa Ibrania 12. Verse 28 to 29. Aya 28 hadi 29. The Bible says, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and god fear because our god is a consuming fire amen hallelujah amen our god mungu wetu is a consuming fire ni moto ulao hallelujah amen sema bwana asifiwe sana amen the word is very clear there na neno liwazi kabisa pale say we must serve god anasema basi tumtumikie mungu acceptably because you can serve god kwa kuwa unaweza kumtumikia mungu it is true you can be serving god ni kweli kabisa uweze kuwa unamtumikia mungu but not in a acceptable standards lakini isiwe kwa njia ambazo zinakubalika you can be in service of god inawezekana uko katika ibada ya mungu but you don't want to keep his standards lakini hutaki kuweka zile kanuni zake god is demanding na mungu anahitaji that we serve god na kwamba tumtumikie mungu acceptably kwa njia inayokubalika na yeye acceptably kwa njia inayokubalika na yeye acceptably Anamalizia na kusema kwa kuwa mungu wetu Sio mungu mungineo Mungu wetu Ni moto ulao There is a demand to serve God. Kuna hitaji la kumtumikia Mungu. To his standards. Kulingana na kanuni zake. With consecration. Tukiwa tunajitia wakfu. If you can hear me can you say a good amen? Kama unanisikia sema amina nzuri. Can you say an encouraging amen? Amen. God does not change with the seasons. Mungu habadiliki na majira. Our God is the same yesterday today and forever. Mungu wetu ni yule yule jana leo na hata milele. Somebody by the name John MacArthur. Na mtu kwa jina John MacArthur. He was a preacher in America. Alikuwa ni mhubiri kule Marekani. John MacArthur. John MacArthur. He said this. Akasema hivi. Satan Shetani continues anaendelea to make efforts akifanya juhudi to make sin less offensive kuifanya dhambi isionekane kana kwamba inaudhi sana to make sin less offensive akijaribu kuifanya dhambi isionekane kana kwamba inaudhi sana but you can do a sin and it is not very offensive na kwamba unaweza tenda dhambi lakini isionekane inaudhi sana in his statement he continues to say na anaendelea kwa ujumbe wake akisema god satan is still having that effort na kwamba shetani bado anangangana to make heaven less appealing ili kwamba afanye bingu zisiweze kuvutia sana so as it were kama jinsi ilivyo heaven is not 
very appealing. So you don't make effort too much to go there. Satan is in that business. He is also in business to make hell less holistic. That hell is not that bad. It is there but it's not that bad. And finally he says the enemy, the devil is in the business to make the gospel rest agent. There is no agency. We have so much time before the, we can preach and all these efforts are there to make sure you don't live a consecrated life that you live with a lot of ease with a lot of ease there is nothing that makes you to go fast in the service of God that is the enemy so whenever you see your life turning to this when you start discussing to yourself and arguing whether the sin is offensive whether the heavens is appealing whether hell is that horrific whether the kingdom business require urgency then you should know there is an attack on your consecration I will not speak too much about that let me speak some few things about the character of a life that is consecrated and then we are going to pray a character of a life that is consecrated these people are just and devoted to God that is what the Bible says Simeon was just and devote he was devoted to the things of God he had lived his life for God his purpose of life was to serve God. I want to say this. Serving God does not mean becoming a pastor. No. Or an elder. No. Serving God means living a devoted life. You can serve God in your business. You can serve God in your position, in your job. The kingdom of God can be felt around you. Whichever area you are in. May you serve God. Can you talk to somebody? May you be devoted to God. In the name of Jesus Christ. The prophetess Anna was such a wonderful woman. The Bible says she was married a virgin. We are talking a life of consecration. And I want to challenge our daughters that it is high time even virginity become precious in the house of God. Anna was a virgin when she was getting married. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says she only lived with her husband for seven years. For seven years. She only had a marriage life for seven years. And then she, by, the, by this time she had 84 years. So you can imagine this woman was in the temple 
alikuwa katika hekalu and the bible says na nasema she was in a temple alikuwa kwenye hekalu serving god akimtumikia mungu in fasting katika kufunga and prayer na kwa kuomba meaning inamaanisha fasting kufunga and prayers na kwa kuomba is serving god ni kumtumikia mungu when we call you for prayer meeting tunapowaita kwa ajili ya maombi we are calling you to serve god tunawaita mkamtumikie mungu when we call you tunapowaita for fasting kwa kufunga we are calling you to serve god tunawaita mkamtumikie mungu this woman had no other job description mwanamke huyo hakuwa na kazi nyingine yote the bible yote. says day night and day nasema usiku na mchana this prophet nabii huyu was serving god alimtumikia mungu was praying for israel alikuwa akiombea israeli was praying alikuwa akiomba for the redemption of israel kuombozi wa israeli rabo shaka terebo shanda she was in the temple alikuwa kwenye hekalu consecration life maisha ya utakaso demands devotion and, and being just na kuwa mwenye haki the second character na tabia ya pili hallelujah of Amen. consecrated life ya maisha yaliyotakaswa consecrated life maisha yaliyotiwa wakfu drives you to god inakuelekeza kwa mungu it drives you to god inakuelekeza kwa mungu See these two people. Hebu watazame watu hawa wawili. Simeon and Anna. Simeon na Anna. When Jesus was being brought. Wakati Yesu analetwa. The Bible says. Biblia inasema. Simeon. Simeon was driven. Alikuwa ameelekezwa by the Holy Spirit. Na Roho Mtakatifu to the courts of the temple. Ilikuwa mbakaza kwa kwenye malango ya hekalu. There was such a connection between his heart and the Lord Jesus. Na Bwana Yesu. The Bible says she was driven. Na Biblia inasema akaelekezwa by the Holy Spirit. Na Roho Mtakatifu. They never even called him. Hawakuimuita. But there was such a connection. Lakini palikuwa na kushikamanishwa huko. And I want to challenge you. Nikutie changamoto. What is this that you are driven to? Je, wewe unaelekezwa kwa nini? Which What is this? Ni kitu gani? You are drawn to. Ambacho unavutiwa sana. Because you could be a Christian. Yawezekana wewe ni Mkristo. But you are still being drawn. Lakini unavutiwa to the songs. Kwa nyimbo that are not godly. Ambazo si za kiungu. You could be a Christian. Yawezekana wewe ni Mkristo. But you are still dr- driven. Lakini bado unaelekezwa. To a daughter's life. Kwa maisha ambayo ni ya uzinifu. You are driven. Na unaelekezwa. To sinners. Kwa wenye dhambi. Actually you say. Na unasema. In the church I don't have friends. Na kwamba kanisani sina marafiki. Friends are more better out there. Marafiki wangu ni wazuri walio wazuri wako kule nje. But a consecrated life. Lakini maisha yaliyotiwa wako. Drives you to God. Inakuelekeza kwa Mungu. Drives you to the house of God. Inakuelekeza kwa nyumba ya Mungu. Drives you to where Jesus is. Inakuelekeza mahali alipo Yesu. Hallelujah. Amen. To drives you there. Inakuelekeza pale. These two people. Na hawa watu wawili a very powerful example of people who are devoted mfano mzuri sana na wenye nguvu watu walio tu spirit of god drove them roho wa bwana akawaelekeza hadi mahali alipo christ was being brought kristo yesu alikuwa kiletwa may you be driven to where god is watu welekezwa alipo yesu may your spirit connect to the holy spirit Wacha moyo wako kuweza kushikamanishwa roho wako kashimanishwa roho wako. May you be driven to where holiness is. Wacha uelekezwe palipo utakatifu. Where sacredness is. Mahali palipo na unakutakaso. Because consecrations kwa sababu kutiwa wakfu drives you to where God is. Unakuelekeza mahali alipo Mungu. Hallelujah. Amen. Consecration kutiwa wakfu actually will separate you Ita, from some people. Itakutenganisha na watu fulani. There are people who will drop off. Kuna watu ambao watajitoa tu wenyewe. There are friends that will drop off. Kuna marafiki watakaojitoa because of your consecration. Kwa sababu ya utakaso wako. Can somebody say I hear you? Mtu aseme nakusikia. Bwana asiwe sana. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They were both drawn by the Holy Spirit. Na watu wakaelekezwa na Roho Mtakatifu. 
Consecrated life Maisha ya kutua wakfu attracts the presence of God inavutia uwepo wa Mungu and anointing of God na na na, na, na utakaso ama kutua mafuta kwa Mungu haleluya the third thing jambo la tatu the character of a consecrated consecrated life tabia ya maisha iliyotua wakfu consecration kutua wakfu determines what you are waiting for kuna amua kile ambacho unangojea haleluya amen Simeon Simeoni had seen alikuwa ameona that he is not going to die ya kwamba hatakufa until he see hadi atakapoona the consolation of Israel kwa kutulizo kwa Israeli there was a confirmation palikuwa na hakikisho by the holy spirit that he is not going to die until he see jesus christ there was something inside him a consecrated life means that you hear the voice of god Simeon had heard the voice. That you are not going to die. Until. Hadi. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is why when he took Jesus. In his hands. He said. Akasema. Sasa Mungu niko tayari. Now I'm ready God. Niko tayari. I'm ready. Kupumzika. To rest. Kwa ajili nimeona na macho yangu. Wokovu wa Israeli. Nimeona. Wokovu ambayo uliniambia. Haleluya. Amen. Kasa mani ko tayari. And he said I'm ready. Haleluya. Amen. Rabo shekate rebo shanda. You know when you are consecrated it is true we require physical things Hallelujah Amen You see then Anna was a married woman It's only that the husband died Hallelujah Amen So she had her personal life But listen to me Consecration Praise the Lord Amen Makes you to wait Things that are higher You wait not only your personal agenda but the agenda of god you are concerned about the agenda of god so you therefore your prayers are not selfish prayers hallelujah amen they are prayers you are telling god i know you have an agenda in this church you have an agenda for the youth you have an agenda for the families you have an agenda for the nation i don't want to die before i see cripples walking before i see the dead being raised up Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to me. Nisikize. There is a higher agenda of God. Kuna agenda kubwa sana ya Mungu. That we need to pursue. Ambao tunafaa kufuatilia. More than just our personal agenda. Zaidi ya agenda zetu binafsi. Simon, Saint Simon was pursuing an agenda. Alikuwa akifuatilia agenda. There was something he was waiting for. Kuna kitu alikuwa akingojea. The redemption and I'm saying God I don't want to die before I see these signs before I see that move I don't want to die before I see cripples literally walking and running out of their this was what Na hii ndiyo Simeon was waiting for. Simeon alikuwa akisubiri. He was waiting for the redemption of Israel. Alikuwa akisubiria ukombozi wa Israeli. Hallelujah. Amen. Spirit living with my trust and with the borders. Deliverance Church Theater. Life Transformation Center. Welcomes you to a life changing program. Tazama juu. Psalms 121 says, Our help 
comes from above and your life will never be the same again tazama ju let it be your prayer spirit together let's connect with the heavens be blessed